Oh, hi there. I'm here today with a stick. <laughs> and if you look very, very carefully, a glorious little gecko that looks like a stick. This is one of the coolest looking creatures on the entire planet. I feel so honored just to get to hold her. They're beautiful. They have this look of moss and lichen on tree bark, which, you know, that's beautiful when you see it on a tree, let alone on a lizard. Their camouflage is just ridiculous. And these eyes are so incredibly captivating with their vertical pupils and just this like starburst pattern on a gold background. The little fringes at the edge of their body, but also covering the entire body to break up their outline. They're just so cool. And their little toes, they've got good gecko feet to start with, but they've got these almost perfectly round tips to their toes. And this gecko, she's settling in. She's like, I finally found my safe place. This is the way they hang out during the day with their feet almost totally concealed by their flat tail. In fact, their genus, Euryplatus, that means flat tail in Greek. Unfortunately, these guys are beginning to be difficult to find in the wild. And this is largely because they come from Madagascar, which is already kind of a small space. And then there's been a lot of habitat destruction and potentially over collecting for the pet industry. All of these things are not good for this gecko in the wild. However, there is an increasing population of these that are captive bred and that are available. So the question really becomes, is this bodacious gecko, which is the mossy leaf-tailed gecko, the best pet lizard for you? To help you figure this out, we are going to score the mossy leaf-tailed gecko based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the mossy leaf-tailed gecko a score of three out of five. The reality is that when these are calm, they're actually very, very easy to handle. They're pretty slow moving. They move almost like a chameleon or a sloth because camouflage is everything for these little geckos. They're also very, very good at holding on because they're an arboreal gecko. They've got really excellent adhesive toe pads, which can not only hold on to you, but they can hold on to leaves or glass or the ceiling. They're incredible. That said, these lizards do not like to be discovered. Like I said, camouflage is everything for these lizards. If they're found in the wild, they're pretty easy to capture and then eat but they're very, very difficult to find. And so you finding them conspicuously can actually be very stressful for them. So they don't generally like to be handled all that much. When they are stressed, they can run, they can jump, they can drop their tail, they can gape at you with their mouth open to threaten you and potentially they could bite you. It's not like it's gonna be that big of a deal, but it could happen. And the reality is that even though these geckos can be fairly easy to handle, it's just hard on them, which is actually why I'm not choosing to handle this gecko, at least not very much today. I, I have her up here on this stick, which is a little bit more of a world where she might feel like she hasn't been discovered. And uh, I'm okay with that because I'm just enjoying getting to look at her up close. She's incredible. However, if you do want a gecko that can be handled considerably more than this, look into things like the New Caledonian geckos, like crested geckos, gargoyle geckos. If you need something mossy, chewies or lychees, there are a lot of great handleable arboreal geckos. This is one that I, I wouldn't recommend it. It's very possible, but it's better to keep that to a minimum, if at all. When it comes to care, we give the mossy leaf-tailed gecko a score of three out of five. This is an insectivorous gecko, which is a little bit different from the New Caledonian geckos. These guys need a steady diet of insects. And I would recommend a broad diversity of insects. Things like crickets can be pretty good. Dubia roaches are excellent. Other roach species as well can be really good. The, the difficult thing with the dubias is just that they're gonna burrow into the substrate. So you might have your best success feeding them off of tongs if you're gonna feed them dubia roaches. Otherwise, they're probably gonna burrow in and you 
and the gecko may never see them again. Females, like this one, may actually take snails as well. That's actually a pretty important part of their diet in the wild as they need the calcium for their eggs. And even in captivity, if you have a steady supply of clean snails, females will probably appreciate them, but it's my understanding that males usually avoid them. They're definitely gonna need some big, thick, barky sorts of branches in that enclosure. Things like cork bark and other just large tree-like branches that can handle the humidity of the enclosure, but give them a good place to hide face down during the day, and also climb at night when they're active. This is pretty much their entire world, so definitely don't skimp on these. Humidity and hydration are gonna be a very big deal with your mossy leaf-tailed gecko, and so you're gonna to need to mist them daily. Potentially having a fogger or a misting system could reduce your workload a little bit, but it's something that's gonna to need to happen daily probably multiple times a day, depending on your climate. This is also gonna be their main source of hydration. Mostly they're going to lap up water droplets off of plants. You can also suspend a water bowl, like from the wall of the enclosure. That is something where they may find that and drink out of that, but definitely don't skimp on the mistings. Ventilation's also gonna be a big deal. You don't want that enclosure to be just sopping wet all the time in stagnant air. So even though you need to keep humidity high, make sure there's decent ventilation. And this is something that you don't often think of with nocturnal reptiles, but is actually very important for the leaf-tailed geckos, and that is UVB. These geckos are asleep during the day, so they don't get out and bask in the sun, but they sleep and hide in plain sight all day long, and so they are exposed to full-spectrum sunlight most of the day. They are gonna need UVB to properly utilize calcium so that they don't develop metabolic bone disease and other calcium deficiencies. Also, a substrate that can hold some humidity, that's gonna be really important for them. I'd even recommend a drainage layer like we did in this video. When it comes to hardiness, we give the mossy leaf-tailed gecko a score of two out of five. These guys are not very tolerant of mistakes with their care. This is a little bit like what you run into with chameleons. Especially heat and proper humidity. Those are gonna be the biggest things that could kill them very, very quickly if you get that wrong. They also can stress fairly easily. Again, this is a gecko that lives to not be discovered. And so if it is living in a place where it feels like it has been discovered or it can't hide, that's gonna cause them a great deal of stress. As I mentioned before, excessive heat. Like with the New Caledonian geckos, these guys keep it a little bit cooler. If they get too hot, I mean, you could lose them in an afternoon, especially if you have them in a car or something like that, you could lose them in a few minutes. So you need to be very, very careful about heat with these. Calcium can also be an issue, especially for females, even if they're not being bred. So make sure they're getting adequate calcium supplementation in their diet and exposure to UVB. A lot of these issues should be remedied considerably by the fact that the majority of these are now being captive bred and not wild caught. So they should do better in terms of stress, but also in terms of parasites and other things that could cause them to crash very quickly. Still heat though, it's not gonna change a darn thing about heat. When it comes to availability, we give the mossy leaf-tailed gecko a score of three out of five. These guys in the wild are Cites appendix two, which means they are not endangered, but things are not looking particularly great for them and they could be very quickly. This has greatly protected the wild population. And so that is fantastic news, though they are still being collected illegally in some degree. So be aware of that. You don't wanna support that. However, captive breeding is going really well. These aren't as easy to breed as some geckos, but there are a number of breeders out there, great breeders that are having really good success. One, one breeder I, I know personally is Melanie from Bertopia geckos. Check them out if you're interested in a mossy leaf-tailed gecko because they're awesome. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the mossy leaf-tailed gecko a score of three out of five. Though this is probably the most affordable of all leaf-tailed geckos, the gecko itself is still gonna cost you a few hundred dollars. After that, everything is pretty reasonable. The enclosure that they need is actually fairly similar to what we created for, say, the neon day geckos or our crested gecko enclosure. What you need is simply much larger and with big pieces of, you know, like cork bark and things on which they can hide because that's their world. The enclosure that you need for these guys definitely should be vertically oriented. Again, 
the way they're going to live their lives, they're going to be on the, the bark of a tree during the day, face down, at night, walking around on those tree branches and tree trunks. And so just simulate that with your enclosure. Again, do not skimp on those large branches. That's their whole world. I'd recommend some live plants like these. But if you want to use fake plants, you can. Just something to give these guys some cover. Again, their whole world is hiding. You're going to need substrate, hydro balls, and screen for making a false bottom. Also some horticulture charcoal. And the UVB lighting. Do not skimp on that. Have that on during the day for many, many hours. Overall, we give the Mossy Leaf-Tailed Gecko a score of 2.8 out of 5. This really isn't a spectacular pet. However, it is absolutely incredible. If what you want is a master of camouflage that just does not like to be discovered ever, then the Mossy Leaf-Tailed Gecko might be the perfect pet lizard for you. I'd like to take just a moment to give the owner of this spectacular mossy leaf-tailed gecko, Mariah Healy from Reptophiles, an opportunity to tell you a little bit about the incredible resource that she has created, which is Reptophiles. Hi, I'm Mariah Healy, and I am the reptile husbandry specialist behind Reptophiles and Reptophiles.com. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about leaf-tailed geckos, specifically mossy leaf-tailed geckos. This one's my personal pet and uh, research specimen. And I've noticed that uh, in my experience with mossy leaf-tailed geckos, um, I've kept a couple of them, and turns out Males tend to have a pattern that more resembles bark, and females tend to have a pattern that more resembles moss. So this one here is a female, and you can see that she has a very mottled pattern that looks like moss or lichen. This is kind of an informal just observation that I have made, but um, so far all the pictures and of uh, leaf-tailed geckos that I've seen that have been confirmed um, in their sex, it seems that this is holding pretty steady. The reason why I added a mossy leaf-tailed gecko to my collection was because of their incredible camouflage. Obviously we've said this a lot today. Camouflage, camouflage, it's really the thing that they've got going for them and there are a lot of reptiles that are very good at camouflage but mossy leaf-tailed geckos are one of the best and a favorite game that I like to play every day is spot the gecko. Uh, it was very difficult uh, when we first brought her home, but you do eventually learn how to see them and make out their outline and their unique pattern against the decor. Of course, it does depend on the decor of your enclosure, and I don't have a lot of moss in my enclosure because my isopods really like to eat it. So I run reptophiles.com, which is a growing database of reptile care guides. Reptophiles tagline is where better reptile care begins because my goal is to help reptile owners, whether they're in the middle of the game or they're just starting out, learn more about how to take better care of the reptiles. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of myths too. And that tends to muddy the water when you're a new keeper and you are hearing different information from all kinds of sources. The goal of Reptophiles.com is to condense all of uh, that information and to distill it based on whether it reflects their natural habitat, whether it's science-based. And we take those the information that wins and then use it to create comprehensive care guides that reptile keepers can actually trust. Thank you very much, Mariah. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Yeah, lick that eyeball. You got the whole eye that time. I wish my camera was out. Jason makes me put it away so we can film. I know, what a dork. Okay, back to that. Anyway. Siren. Siren? We don't want the siren? Here's your moment if you want to take a picture. Yeah, see? What are we doing? Got like 30 seconds. Lick that eye. Lick it. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs>